All right, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. No, you're not seeing double. Today in the lab, we actually have two DS1513 Pluses from Synology. Uh, we have the, both of these in the lab because we're going to test one of Synology's uh, sort of higher end features for the small to medium business market, and that's going to be high availability. What this does is you can have two identical models pretty much stacked up with the exact uh, hard drives. In this case, we're going to have uh, five two terabyte drives in each one and you cluster these in a manner so that if one were to go down your data is still available with a slight pause. It's not going to be a true cluster where you have a quorum so that there's no downtime but the downtime should be minimal between the two and that's what we're going to test. We'll tell you exactly how much downtime you're going to have between these two when one goes down. We're also going to take a look at some of the more high, uh, advanced features that comes in the new 1513 Plus. So we're going to go ahead and push one of these boxes off to the side. There's no need to do everything in duplicate. And we'll dive into what you see on the packaging as well as what you get inside of the box. All right, taking a quick look at the, uh, the label on here. Once again, Synology tends to use a generic box and they just go ahead and differentiate the different products with uh, a label. So what you're going to see is this is the, again, this is the DS1513 Plus. The hardware is going to be... Um, you know, pretty standard. We'll go ahead and dig in a little bit later into exactly what that hardware is. But you have five full bays. It's very similar to the DS1512 uh, Plus that we showed you earlier in one of our other videos. But uh, it's going to be an improvement in the number of uh, network ports, the way it processes the information, as well as some of the additional features, which again we'll talk about. So we're going to not bore you too much with the box. We'll go ahead and get right into what's inside the package. All right, now we've gotten everything out of the box. As you can see, your DS1513 Plus is going to be inside of the same thick styrofoam that we're used to seeing when we get a product from Synology. It's very well packed. You have an outer layer of a, kind of like a thin styrofoam wrap that's going to protect it from scratches, dents, anything like that. Inside you have your usual bag that's going to have your welcome kit, everything in there. And you're also going to have a small box that contains your power cord, keys, uh, two network cables again uh, and you're also going to have a small bag of screws these are going to be for additional drives etc etc usually with Synology you'll also have a disc in here that's going to have some utilities that'll let you to connect to these uh, without needing to have it previously configured for the IP range that you're on it's going to reach out look for a specific range of MAC addresses and then it's going to go ahead and find it gives you the opportunity to change the IP address change the admin password as well as do a few other things to it with these, we did not receive that. However, you can grab it from Synology's website so you can get the latest and most up-to-date version. Possibly that's exactly what they're expecting you to do. So we'll go ahead and plow on and we'll get this unpacked and we'll take a look at the, the, the actual disk station itself. And uh, then we'll start pulling it apart and breaking everything down. All right, now we got the packaging off. And one of the first things that we want to uh, draw your attention to is it's kind of a little bit different layout on the front. As well as they moved away from the glossy black plastic to more of a matte black. This is going to help reduce the uh, fingerprints as well as dust collection. You won't, it will still do it, but it's just not going to be as visible as it is on some of those glossy surfaces like you see on the uh, DS1512. It's kind of a nice arrangement. They've also changed some of the, uh, the status uh, LEDs and they've moved the power button away from the side and put it directly in the center. Other than that, everything is pretty much the same. Uh, the keys work the same. You have the little small keys, they're going to slip right in here, you turn it, and that's going to allow you to pop out the drive bay. Now one of the nice things about the DS1513 is that it's 100% toolless. So you actually don't have to have any screws to get these drives plugged in. What you do is you take these rails, you pop them out, and then from there your drive comes out. So it's a much cleaner design, uh, easier to in, you know, put drives in and take them out. If you want, however, they did include the grommets here so that you can actually physically mount these. If that's your style, if you want to make sure you do that, you, know, you're, you, you can, you have that option. But for everybody else, you just simply slide your, slip your drive in, take your mount, make sure you hear it click in, do the same thing to the other side, and you're off and you're good to go. All right, now Synology, uh, in this Synology we actually have five, let's go ahead and pop this out, we have five two terabyte Seagate Barracuda drives and that's going to be the storage that we'll use across this, as well as in the secondary one we have the uh, exact same drive so we can make sure that our performance is consistent across the entire set. We're going to go ahead and pull out these drives here and we'll show you what it looks like inside 
so you can see that the uh, how the drives actually fit in there and what kind of system they have to make sure that these drives don't vibrate. One of the issues we've seen in larger NASs, as well as you know, even in some of the smaller ones when you start getting into 5 bay, is that they tend to want to use metal to go ahead and line up your drives. Synology uses a, a very smooth plastic. It's a, almost like an, an ABS plastic, although it's, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. And what this does is it actually reduces the vibration simply because these are also plastics. So you're not going to get as much vibration, a little bit less noise. You're also going to reduce the amount of heat buildup from the metal that's in there. And it makes for a nice clean setup. Again, and we'll show you this, the back plane back there is, is a higher end back plane. It's already configured for SAS drives, although this particular system does not support SAS at all. It supports, uh, you know, your standard SATA th uh, 3 drive, so you can put SSDs in here if you want. You do have that option. If you look at the back here, you can see your smaller screw points. You could put the smaller 2.5 inch uh, SSDs or even 2.5 inch uh, SATA drives if you wanted to do that, although most of those are uh, lower, low enough RPM that it probably wouldn't be worth your while to, to go that far. All right, let's go ahead and flip it around on the side and uh, show you what's happening here. Uh, as with the DS1512 uh, Plus, you have the Synology name on the side. There's a grill that's behind where the uh, name has been cut out. That's going to allow air to come in here. The motherboard is on this side, so it's going to allow the, uh, this to keep the back of that motherboard cool. Flip around another quarter turn, and we're taking a look at what we've got on the back end. Um, as you can see, like we mentioned, this is going to have four 1 gigabit LAN ports as opposed to the traditional two. Uh, this is going to give you some nice extras that you really don't see in a lot of other systems. One of the big things here is that you can't, you know, when you have two ports, what you end up with is you end up you know, making that decision. Do I go with high availability? Do I go with failover? Do I go with performance? Here you don't have to actually make that choice. You can do all four in a 802.3 AD setup, so it's going to give you four gigabits of uh, you know, bandwidth directly back to your switch. It's going to help you if you have a lot of connections that are hitting this box, or you can actually break it up into two and two. So you're going to have two 802.3 AD port channels that are going to be set up in link aggregation control protocol, and then you can split those up to two different switches, so you still have that high availability. If one goes down, one switch goes down, you still have that two gigabit uh, channel through through to this. It's going to still give you that performance, but you're also going to have that failover and that fallback that you need when you're working in a, you know, an environment that needs to be up all the time. It's a great feature and it's nice to see that even in what, what is considered a small to medium sized NAS product, you're getting that at this level. You have four uh, USB 2.0 ports, you also have two USB 3.0 ports, and you have the two eSATA ports. These are great because you can use those with a system like the DX513 that we showed you. It's going to allow you to actually increase the capacity up to 15 uh, drive bays. So you could take this quite a bit when you consider that they now have four terabyte drives. So that's a total of 60 terabytes of raw storage that you could put into this. All right, the last side we're going to take a look at is this side, and it's again, it's just identical to the other side. You have the Synology name, and of course that grill that's behind there. It's going to allow you uh, that air, extra air cooling. So we're going to flip it back to the back, and now we're going to go ahead and start taking things apart. All right, we've gone ahead and we've taken not only the fan mount, but we've also take, actually taken the fan off so we can see who makes this. And as you can see, this is a YS Tech fan. It's not a bad fan. Uh, you, of course, you can replace these, which is nice. You just go ahead and pop out the four screws, and you can switch them out for whatever you want. Down inside here, let's see if you can get a look at that. You can see that this is connected. It's easy to reach, so you don't actually have to disassemble everything to go ahead and get the fan out. To remove the fan, if you just want to do some cleaning, there's actually two little screws, one here at the top and one down here at the bottom. So you pop those out, and then the fan slides out, and you just disconnect it and put it off to the side. So then that gives you access back here. You can go ahead and blow it out if you have some dust off or something like that, and you want to go ahead and clean this out. To remove the outer shell, it's four simple screws on the back, and then this should just pop right off. So we'll go ahead and get those off next, pull the shell off, and we'll show you what's inside there. All right, actually, we were a little bit incorrect. It's not just four screws. There's actually one at the top, but still, once you get that, you just slide it off, and it pops off the back. So we'll take a look at the power supply, which is over here on the, it's uh, basically on the right-hand side as you were looking at the front of the NAS. This is going to be very similar to what we've seen in their past products. 
So we'll go ahead and get this disconnected. It's got a nice little strap. It covers up the power supply. These popped off. And of course the main power connector over here. We're going to have to cut some uh, some straps, so let's go ahead and get those cut out of the way for you and we'll be right back. Alright, we've got the power supply disconnected. Now, this is actually a Delta Electronics power supply, which is a very good power supply. Delta makes some, you know, some industrial power supplies. We were surprised because we were actually expecting to see a Seasonic in here with that 80 plus uh, bronze, uh, you know, certification on it. However, Delta is still going to give you a good and reliable power source. And you're going to have plenty of uh, power here to make sure that everything's up as running. So we'll give you all the specs for this power supply uh, in the written review, which if you click on the link directly below this video, that'll take you to our site and you'll go ahead and be able to see the written review. So if you want to know the specs on the power supply, everything will be included there. Now we're going to go ahead and dive into a little bit more into the actual hardware that's going to control this beyond power. All right, flipping things around to the other side, we can see the back of the motherboard. Here is your uh, additional RAM slot. Now, previously we've seen where the motherboards themselves are capable of handling considerably more memory than what the operating system is able to handle. Uh, we have talked to Synology about this. This will take a full four gigabytes of memory on the motherboard. However, the operating system, the uh, disk station operating system, is not going to be able to address more than three gigabytes. So, well, you can put four in here, you're not going to do yourself any favors. Uh, you know, you're just going to get one gigabyte of that. It's sort of like if you were running XP 32-bit or even Windows 7 32-bit. It's it sees it technically, but it really can't address more than that uh, that three gigabyte limit. Uh, Synology has mentioned that they are working on possibly moving to a 64-bit architecture that allow them to address more memory. However, they did not provide me uh, with any kind of timeline or any additional information other than it's something that they're looking into. So that's potentially good news for those of us that want to, you know, stack these systems up with as much memory as we possibly can. All right, the next step for us is going to go ahead and uh, get this motherboard off of here. And then we'll show you what that looks like and all the pieces and parts of it. And we'll also pull out the back plane and give you a closer look at that. All right, now that we've gone ahead and stripped the DS1513 Plus down to it's just a, basically a shell, we're going to take a look at some of the modules and pieces and components that are in here. First thing we'll start off with is going to be the backplane. Remember, we told you that this backplane is a little bit higher end. It actually does support SAS drives, so it's, it's again, it's a higher end backplane. It's going to be able to handle a little bit more than a backplane that was designed just for SATA drives. And we've seen this actually in action where you just have better power flow. It's a better made component. It's designed to last. So you're going to get some good uh, performance out of this, not necessarily in terms of actual data throughput, but just in terms of longevity and its ability to last, uh, which is the most, one of the most important things that you're going to have when you purchase a box like this. You definitely don't want this to go out on you after a, you know, a year or six months or even 18 months. You want it to last for quite a while. Uh, another component we want to pull up to you is this is the USB 3.0 and the SATA um, eSATA ports. Here they connect into the system uh, via power port as well as via a uh, PCIe 1X slot. So this plugs in. It's going to be similar to a port replicator. These eSATA ports are going to connect into either you know a, a separate eSATA drive. If this you know something like a let's say a two terabyte drive or along those lines, you can plug that in. But if you have uh, something like the DX513. That's actually going to plug in here and allow you to address those volumes and act as if it's just a physical extension of the, uh, the DS1513. And the nice thing about that is that you can just plug in an extra box, put it right on top. You got another five bays. If you need another five bays, you throw another one on to fill out the full two eSATA ports there. And you have a total of 60, up to a, you know, 60 terabytes of space that you can address. And that's close to what some enterprises are actually running. You know, your uh, lower end enterprises, of course, you have larger enterprises, which are running, you know, uh, petabytes of data. And that's just, that's pretty much up there. You're not going to get that in this kind of class of device, but still being able to set up and, and address and use 60 terabytes of data and something in this price range and in this class is a phenomenal option, um, especially since you don't have to actually replace the entire unit to continue to do that, to just add more and more storage to the device. So that's definitely a plus in Synology's favor. All right, the next thing we're going to do is take a look at the motherboard. So we'll go ahead and pop that up. 
Um, we haven't pulled the heat sinks off of it yet, but we will. You can see you have your memory on the front. And you also have a memory module on the back. We talked about the fact that this will support four gigs, but the operating system isn't going to be able to address it. You have your PCIe uh, 1X slot, PCIe 4X slot. That's for your back plane. This is for your uh, eSAT and your USB 3.0 ports. You have your chipset. You have your CPU. Here you have your USB 2.0 ports and your, uh, your four LAN ports. Notice that everything on here is all solid capacitors. That's going to give you, again, that extra longevity. And, of course, your disk operation module, your DOM is sitting down here. That's going to control your uh, disk OS, your disk station operating system. And this up here, this port here, is just going to give you a connection to all of the front control ports. We're going to go ahead and pop the heat sinks off now and take a look at what we have under there as well. All right, getting back into the review, we're taking a look um, at the motherboard once more. And, unfortunately, the... Uh, the heatsink that's over top of the processor here is on uh, probably using some sort of a solder. It's not movable. This is on there. It's firmly affixed. We don't want to damage it uh, because it doesn't appear to be. Uh, it appears to be sim very similar to the uh, the chip here. Now, looking up, this is uh, this one here is actually related to. Uh, it, we've got numbers on it that say it's Cedar Trail. However, it uh, it doesn't appear to actually be that. The markings uh, you'll be, you'll be able to get a good close look at those one, uh, in the review that we have li linked below. So we will dig some more and we'll also reach out to Synology to see exactly which Atom processor is in here, also which chipset. So that's going to cover all of the uh, components that are inside the Synology DS1513+. Plus. We're now going to go ahead and reassemble this, plug this in. We're going to test it, uh, test some throughput with all four ports set up in 802.3 AD, as well as kind of splitting between the, the uh, switch stack that we have to see just what kind of performance we can get from the two. They're transferring data back and forth. We are going to leave these for the most part in the Synology recommended RAID setup, and we'll discuss that in our performance section, which is going to be... Uh, not necessarily a part of this review, but it's going to be a secondary review after we get everything together. We're also going to do some intensive testing on the high availability, see what kind of applications you can run across that, as well as uh, just exactly what benefits it brings to the table. So we hope to have that review out to you very soon. Once again, thank you for joining us here at Decrypted Tech. We're going to get this all put together and hopefully get you some review numbers very quickly.